You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Fatal Force Tragedy of the Lone Wolf Arc. So, the last place we left off was a pretty awesome fight scene between Draviar and some werewolf, possibly the one that actually bit us in the first place. So, without further ado, guys, let's jump right back into the action and see where it leads. <clears throat> Alright. It's like the magic show where a rabbit is inside a hat, and after a single tap, it disappears from the hat, but on a far, far grander scale. <laughs> How do I even say that? Woo! Nice! This evening I just found out Wendigos exist, and now witches too? Well, no, not quite. Huh? We're still dealing with the same person, actually. Mickey stated he turned around to pick Zero up. Javier retrieved his sword left on the road. He paused and was staring at something. I saw they approach him. I couldn't tell exactly what was wrong, but my heartbeat was starting to rise. J Javier? Did you notice something? Huh? What? I tried to look around the area, and I noticed that the werewolf who attacked us was has disappeared. Did it run away? There may be that werewolf was the one who cast the curse. He escaped. Indeed. The interesting part is, this guy can hide his scent. Very clever one. He chuckled and changed his sword into a tiny blade. Wait a minute. That blade is the same one he cut himself with to demonstrate his healing before. This is getting really weird. So, you're giving up already? Hmm. Yeah, that's enough for today. Wait, what? I mean, I already got what I want for now. We'll figure out the rest at a later time. What does he mean by he already got what he wanted? Javier walked straight to the car and knocked on the wind on the side view mirror. I quickly follow him. The car window rolled down and I could see Lisa and Tony. They seemed to be okay. Everyone okay? Yes, Chief. <laughs> Wolves. Mm. Yep. Seems all fine to me. I couldn't hold in my laughter after hearing that one heck of an exchange. Javier winked at me. He laughed with me. It was a simple joke, but it already managed to make me forget all the terror that I felt during that night. Lisa, see you tomorrow. Alright, Chief. Good night. Eh? I could hear Tony starting the engine, and Lisa closed the window. They drove off, leaving the two of us there, alone. Drav- Draviar? I still don't get it right now. About what? He looked at me, and then walked up to me. Uh, by complete surprise, he lifted me like he was picking up a sack. Javier, what are you doing? No, sorry, not comfortable? Maybe this is a better position. Aw. He rejected me into a cradling position, like a, like a baby. Just like how he did when he saved me from the lightning. Trav. Don't get me wrong here, bud. We'll just be walking back to my home. And don't try to think of this as some kind of romantic scene. He winked whilst giving a small laugh. It's a good thing you're not heavy at all. Not even some brand new pups are this light. But this small one is so damn heavy! Ugh! Mickey was not far from us, carrying Zero on his back. It seems that Zero was still asleep. Well, it's a good thing you work out every day, huh? You're probably the strongest out of everyone. Javier teasing Mickey. He lightly bumped Mickey's shoulder. I nearly let out a laugh. Mickey doesn't seem annoyed by that statement. Matter of fact, he seems to be... Blushing? Okay, then. Can someone tell me what is going on? You still don't get it, do you? Do I? Considering what happens, we cannot risk the other members to be involved further. You just saw that bitch that has followed you since you left the academy. But I didn't see it, and it just happened to attack us. Just let me explain, Mickey. You were the only one making this more confusing. Then, he takes a small breath and looks directly at me. I'll explain everything, just as I promised you. But now we need to walk or rather run since that guy might be following us again. Don't worry, this time we'll not be followed again. We're going to use a different route. I see now. I nodded him, even though I really don't know what he actually meant by that. I'm not going to ask questions right now, though. Get ready. Heh, <laughs> let's see who arrives first. Hold on tight, Nary. Wait, what? A race? If I win, you'll be my slave on the bed for one night. Mickey chuckled in a perverted way. If I win, then I'll slap your face. What? Go! Ah! I barely felt any lurch when they started to run. They were running towards the woods near the road, and I closed both my eyes. 
Dravier carefully held me. They were traveling faster and faster. I felt like I was riding on a motorcycle going as fast as it could. Everything was whizzing by, leaping over entire river spans and boulders. They were running so quickly it was getting really hard for me to keep my eyes open from the wind whipping against my face. It feels like I'm flying. The lurches left and right, up and down. It was like riding a roller coaster. Suddenly I could feel Dravier slowing himself down to a walking pace before eventually coming to a complete stop. Neri, open your eyes. Huh? Hello, Thumbnail. <laughs> I opened my eyes slowly, immediately looking at Draviar's face. He was smiling. Why are you smiling like that? I asked, and he began to chuckle with my question. Let me go ahead and save it right there. This is so good. Well, your face seems pale again, Nary. Pale? Are you afraid with speed? Are you afraid of the speed, Nary? Uh, kinda. By the way, Nary, over there you should see it. I nod and slowly turn my head towards where he was looking. I suddenly bite my lip. Oh, goodness, that is pretty. I felt like I was hypnotized from the view in front of me. It was our small town. The shimmering light from the building is so beautiful. Are we in the mountains? Well, probably not quite. We're certainly high, though. But there was something else that made me feel so warm inside. The night sky. It was completely clear of any haze or clouds. Only the moon and the in only the moon and an uncountable number of stars. It's so surreal. I could I could feel star I could feel tears starting to roll down my cheeks. The light of the brilliant sky. Never have I felt something quite like this in my entire life. No, oh, you're such a little crybaby. He wiped my tears with his palm before slowly putting me down and sitting next to me. So, do you feel better now? That uh huh? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just really amazed by the view. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I was worried about why you were crying for a moment. But why would you bring me here? What about your race with Mickey? Nah, I'll deal with him later. I figured, though, that after everything that's happened today, you needed this. Besides, in case you still haven't found your arrow yet, this one should help. He smiled. I never thought he would be so concerned about me finding my own arrow. But indeed... This view certainly gave me a feeling that I've never quite experienced before. <sighs> Thank you, Draviar. You're welcome. Now, let's just enjoy the view and relax, alright? Sure, I just hope I can get my smartphone back soon. It would be nice to take a picture of this. No, oh, that. He suddenly dug his hand into one of his pockets. Here, your phone. I fixed it. Should be all ready for you. My phone! I take the phone from his hand and turn it on. I'm glad nothing happened to it. Wait, you fixed it? Yes, it was soaked when I found it inside your clothes. Luckily for you... Oh, God, yawn. Ugh. Luckily for you, it wasn't seriously damaged, but I managed. Jeez, that's nice of you. I thought I lost it on the day that werewolf attacked me. Yeah, don't worry about it. You really have quite the dirty collection on your phone, by the way. He smirked and glared at me as if he was doing as if I was doing something wrong. Huh. Dirty collection. Wait, did he Oh no, he checked the contents of my phone, didn't he? There's no way he's talking about anything else. No denying it. I also ha I always save pictures, especially from Twitter and several other sites. Especially furries and kimonos and some of them certainly go into explicit territory. Ah, shit! My face flushes a bright red. Ah, oh, don't be shy. <laughs> I never thought you would also be a guy for visual novels. I still remain silent, trying my best not to face him directly. Yeah. Don't worry about it, Nary. I already know. Huh? W what? That you like men. I... I... That, mm, I don't really know how to counter that. S since when? I asked, but still could not face him, pretending to admire the view. Of course, since he checked your phone and saw all the penises on there, or the asses, or I don't know. Well, since day one when you woke up, that moment Mickey entered my room wearing only underwear, your heart rate shot up pretty fast. I completely forgot about that event. Yeah, I think he had a heart on, too. Ooh, I'm reading so fast, it's making me yawn. 
Damn it. Yeah, I don't take it seriously. We can still be friends. Since when have you decided we are friends? I always felt like you were treating me as your subject. You don't want me to be your friend? I looked directly at him. He seemed really serious and worried about it. Well, I really want to. It's just that I'm scared you'll be disgusted by me eventually. Why would that be the case? Well, I might end up seducing you. I chuckle and give him a small punch on the shoulder. <laughs> Seduction. Do you remember who I live with? Mickey is always trying to flirt with me all the time. Kind of reminds me of the situation on It's Always Sunny with Mac and Dennis. Mac is always trying to get Dennis to sleep with him. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm just joking. Huh. He let out a small chuckle and began to stand up. Let's go. Are we going to walk this time? I asked since he's not offering to lift me like before. Yeah? He pointed me in the direction that... Wait, what? A large building appeared just behind... No, wait, we're in the building, on the balcony. On the first floor balcony. We're already here? No wonder you didn't bother about Mickey. About Mickey. You already won the race! Meh, even if he arrived first, we would have gone straight to bed. And fall asleep. Ah, right, he's been carrying zero and his weight probably would have taken the energy out of him. 100 marks for you. Now come in and take a bath. I already prepared your pajamas and placed them on the bed in my room. Pajamas? Seriously? Hmm, this wolf. He already knows my dark secrets, and yet he's still nice to me. Most of the time, people are repulsed by those who they consider weird, especially if it affects them or a group they're part of. It's not like we asked to have it this way, it's just that it's almost ingrained in human nature. But Draviar seems to not be bothered by me at all. He treats everyone equally. Draviar has already entered the house and while I'm still outside. The view outside still makes me want to stay. I can't help it. This house is really well positioned, surrounded by forest, high places, and with clear sight on the city. I like it. A few minutes later, I can hear someone coming from the nearby forest. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Mickey finally arrives and looks kind of exhausted while Zero is still sleeping on his back. Grrr. Ah. Huff. Huff. Seems like you, like you, like you lose. I chuckled and he seemed annoyed. Ah, whatever. I need to put this tiny thing inside. Mickey goes straight into the house and seems really upset with his defeat. I think I'm going to go inside, too. I go inside and start trying to figure out which of the three doors lead to Draviar's room. Hmm, maybe I could try his were this werewolf ability. I remember a TV series, a teenager that turns into a werewolf and learns to control it. I think I can use the same method. I try to remember their scents and focus on them. Hmm, there is kind of a smooth scent, like sweet candy? He's always eating candy. I confuse Mickey's. His scent is almost like alcohol and somehow a bit like... Peppermint? Draviar, I'm always with him. He has a strong but calming scent. Chamomile? Let's try this. First door I try to sniff around it. Nothing. Definitely nothing. Next one I try to sniff around it. Oh. This one must be Mickey's. It also had zero scent. He must have put him in his room. Mickey must be really tired. I can hear him snoring inside. The last door must be Draviar's room. I can confirm it. The smell of chamomile. I open the door and... I was right. I went to his bed, and it seems he really had prepared the pajamas. Hmm. I should take a bath. After the bath, I try to put on the pajamas. Whoa. It really fits me well. Oh. That must be Draviar. Well, seems like he had a really good smell. He chuckles. I took a bath, silly wolfie. Ah, by the way, here. He gives me a cup of... Chocolate. Hot chocolate. He also, brought, he also brought another one. It seems like herbal tea. Maybe that drink is for him. Let's sit there, or you can sit on my, at my bed. He suggested and he goes to the cabinet to bring a small table and a chessboard? You want to play a game of chess at a time like this? Why not? Besides, I'm kind of curious to play with a champion like you. While we're playing, I can share all the information that I promised to share with you. He chuckled. Maybe because he saw that trophy. I think it's not a big deal. He seems to understand me. He seems to underestimate me. <sighs> okay, but I want white. No, very well. He set the ch- What's his music? He set the chessboard and put everything in order. Then we, we both sat face to face with each other. 
I drank some hot chocolate. Ladies first. As you wish, my lord. Would you like a good Atama egg platter, my lord? I took my move. I took my move by moving one of my soldiers. Hmm. Let me see. So, about the information you want to share with me. Hmm. Let me make it easy. I work for the government, a special forces unit in the military meant to counter the supernatural. F Force. Fatal Force. He said, and he moved one of his soldiers. F Force. Failure Force. I laugh hard, and he doesn't seem annoyed about it. I, sorry, I'm just joking. I move another one of my soldiers. Let's save it right here. You know, I am. You know, I am the one who chose the name for my unit. I could tell. I could tell you were the leader. Lisa kept calling you Chief. An Alpha. He suddenly laughs a bit. An Alpha, huh? Because I'm a wolf, huh? He moves another soldier in that position. I remove his black soldier since it is the opposite to mine. Take that spot. I take that spot with my white soldier. So, what does the F stand for? Fatal. My unit is called Fatal Force. F fatal Force? To be continued. Wait. Chapter 3 end. Okay. What? No! No! We need more! <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, we need more of this. Oh my god. See you later. Oh man. I don't know why I thought the full game was out already. Oh, okay, guys. Well, then I guess it cuts this episode a little bit short. Um, okay, for now, at least, that is the end of Fatal Force. Until the next update, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!